Hey everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how I've made this card, which I actually made during a Facebook Live. And it's a fun way of showing you how to make your own pop-up cards with any dies that you want. So I've done this as a new home card, so I need a couple of them. And then when you open it up, you can see these elements that I have here. So none of these are specific pop-up dies. They're just a selection of ones that I chose that I really like. And I just show you how you can add these tabs different size pop-ups depending on how far out you want it to pop out to create these lovely scenes. So it's very straightforward to do so let me show you how. Okay so I've actually done a lot of the pieces that I need because I cut a lot of it in half during the Facebook Live so the other half I'm going to use on this card so it's going to be the same as that but it's almost going to be like on the flip on the reverse side. So there's the other half of the curtain. I did do the window again I'll show you all those pieces and then we've got all these bits and bobs here as well. So I've already gone ahead and done the background here. Again you'll want to do this twice if you want to have the same on the front. Basically the embossing folder that I've used here is this one, it's Paper Discovery Timeless Room. And I ran it through first of all in white, then I ran it through again and cut out the white piece and inked it up and stuck it onto the first white one. And then I just ran this bottom piece through using some brown cardstock, inked it up and stuck it on the bottom. So it's a nice way to use embossing folders. You can kind of paper piece them back together to create the scene, which is what I've done there. So that is going to go into the back here, or the inside of this six by six card. Now I've done it to the exact size, so you'd want that to be six by six. Okay, cut it down. But that is gonna stick now onto the back of that card. Okay. Other bits and pieces I use for the dog. I'm not gonna put a dog into this one. I could always add that in later, but it's from Fairy Friends, which is a creative stamping issue, and it's this one here, but you get loads. It's a really lovely stamp set. And then for the window, so here's the window, it's the Card Making Magic Beautiful Day. And what I've done is cut out three of them, stuck them on top of each other. Then I stamped the picture and actually during the live I then die cut the picture and paper pieced it into all the squares. And then someone in the chat said, why don't you just stick it behind the frame? Simple things, but I didn't think at the time. But what's one thing I have done in this one is I've actually put a sheet of acetate underneath the white and in front of the photo or the picture there. It gives you this really lovely effect. So yeah, that's the one that I've used there. And then for that little scene, I've just used this stamp here, but you could do anything. That's from an old Crafts Beautiful magazine, issue 313. Then inside, I've got this little kind of ivy that I've got hanging down from the window, and it's from a Card Making Magic province collection. For the home letters, I've used my chunky alphabet. For the new home on the front, I've used the Craftwork cards. And then for the curtains, you also get your kind of drapes and stuff here as well. It's the Paper Discovery Window Tag Editions. It's lovely because the die also acts as a stencil. So you'll see there, you die cut it, then leave it in the die and then go over it um, and you get this lovely effect. It looks like I've splattered something on there, but you probably won't really notice that. And then here's the other one where I've used the chair, the pillow, the fireplace, the plant, the lamp and the rug there as well and again that's all part of that paper discovery and I'll link as much as I can below. So you want to get all of your elements okay so that's why I just thought I'd talk you through that bit because actually it shouldn't take too long to do this card because the main part now is creating the pop-up piece and that's what I wanted to really focus on because already people have been sharing this on the group and they've been putting their own twist on it and they've been having all kinds of great things popping out of the card it looks really really nice. So first of all I'm going to stick down my background so whatever one you have stick that down. Now you might want to put something along the bottom as well. I'm just going to extend the brown cardstock so it's like the carpet and you'll see that in a minute. Okay so while that's drying I've got this piece here and I'm going to stick that along the bottom. I did cover the whole piece during the live and then I put a piece of white over here because I just forgot but I did always want to do it just halfway so I'm going to make sure I do that today. So I just want to check that the width of this is straight. Yes it is. So all I'm going to do is add my glue to roughly the area that I'll need and then I'm just going to trim it. You always get a nicer finish that way and you can ensure it sticks right up to the edge of the card. So just bring it up to that score line. Okay, and then I can just flip it over and just trim off the edge there. 
So now I've got the bottom there as well. Actually this card size is a bit different so I had to pull it up and I've caught the end there but I'll be able to cover that. But I've actually got a white space there but it's still, it doesn't matter, it still looks like it's all part of the actual living room display. So now you want to start doing your kind of wall. So I've got my window that I'm going to pop there. I'm then going to have my curtain hanging. I'm actually going to bring this one in here because what will happen is when I join them, because I have the other half of the fireplace here, this is going to go here. I'll actually be able to join up and create almost like a larger, you know, scale living room there. Slightly different shade of the wallpaper, but you get the idea of what I've done. So it's just a nice way to be able to show you how you can kind of get two cards, you know, in one there. So let's start. In fact, I'm going to just try and line it up a bit because it just gives me a nice idea that I'm going to have everything kind of where it should go. And if you're, you know, you're not a member of Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group, it's a place where you can share anything that you make that's inspired by my tutorials. And it's a really great group because you get to see versions of what I make. You know, you could see like 20 or 30 of them and some of the ideas are fantastic. And people do things with them and I think, wow, that's amazing. Why didn't I think of that? So it's a, it's a place that's full of inspiration. It's such a lovely group. So do go and check it out if you can. So now I'm just going to pop that one, just lining it up there. But you want to make sure it's flush if you're doing something similar to me to the edge of your card there. And then this one I'm just going to stick directly down. And then the curtain goes flush with this side. And you get to see all that lovely scene. A lot of the house was actually covered in that one, whereas on this one, because it's obviously the curtains on the other side, you get to see a lot more of it there. What I then did is I cut this strip here just to create a little bit of a, a curtain pole. So I'm going to have it about there. Most of it gets covered by the curtains and the plant, but it is there. So again, just going to trim that off and put a very thin amount. So right now all I'm doing is building my scene. So you might have a nice Christmas, someone did do a really nice Christmas scene in the group. So, you know, you might have a nice Christmas tree, stamp and a window and stuff like that. You could certainly use that in this. And then I'm just going to add some glue to this piece here. And I'll put a little bit of foam just under the last bit so it doesn't kind of bend just down on here. I'll do that in a moment. But now you can see how that's going to look. And then I have this ivy here. All I did was put a bit of glue on the back and down the body. Fold that top leaf over the top of the curtain pole and then just stick the rest down there. You can see now it really starts to create such a nice scene. Then I've also got the little one here. I've just cut down a tiny little bit of foam there just to go on the back of the vase. And again, just sit it there on the top of the fireplace. Okay, so that's everything that I need there. Next, you want to start doing your pop-up pieces. So. First of all, I want my chair. Now you need to decide whatever you have in your pop-up. When it folds flat, you don't want it poking out of the top. So, you know, you might have it all the way out the front here, but when that goes flat, it's going to stick out the top here. So whatever you have, make sure when you fold it, do a test that it stays within the area or the size of your card. So with this one here, let me just bring in my ruler. So this one came out one and a half inches. Okay, now the width of the strip is entirely up to you. The height and everything is all up to you as well. I'm going to cut this to half an inch, which is that just works well with this chair. So half an inch, and then I want to have half an inch to attach to the wall. So I'm going to score at half an inch. It's then popping out that one and a half inches, so I'm going to then score at two. And then I want another half an inch to attach it to the back of the chair. So I'm just going to trim that away there. So this is just a piece of half by two and a half, scored at half an inch and two. So 
straight away I know that I need to attach one side or one of those tabs to the back of the chair. I'm going to bring it down quite low so you don't really see it and keep within the colours that are in the card but that's what I'm going to do with that piece for the moment just fold that other tab down. But you can see now how this will attach and it will sit just nicely just kind of where that's that kind of skirting piece is there like this but I need to attach the legs it needs to have it needs to be stabilized really to the bottom of the card so if you look inside here can you see these tiny little tabs so you just want to cut them to the width of whatever it is so again I'm doing mine for this chair but it's going to be about a quarter of an inch and then I can trim this you know I'm just going to work with this long piece stick it so it's, it sits behind that leg and it's going to blend in with the carpet here and then I'm just going to trim off so I've got about the same amount hanging off there okay and then I'm going to do the same on the other leg I'm going to just trim that off so that's what I have and then just fold it so that the fold is right at the bottom of that leg or whatever it is you're doing see like so so again just pinch it together make sure your glue's dry so you want it to be hidden so now you can see you can't see those when they're going to be stuck down so now I'm going to add glue to these pieces and to this one here And then I'm gonna, I know I want this to go in the middle of the card or just thereabouts. So I'm gonna stick that one down, keep everything nice and straight, get that back one down on the wall. And then once it's in a right angle, you can stick those bottom pieces down there as well. If you go to fold it flat and just push down on it, that way you know it's gonna fold flat and all those pieces are gonna stick down. Okay, so now when I open this one up, your chair pops up and everything's nice and straight. Then I want to add my lampshade. So I do exactly the same thing. This time I'm going to use some white and you just want to decide how far out you want it to pop out. This one here popped out by half an inch. So again, I'm going to cut this piece to half an inch wide. And this time I only want to stick a little bit down on the curtain, so I'm just going to have a quarter inch tab. It's going to stick out by half an inch, so then I want to score again at one and a quarter. And then another quarter inch tab. So this whole piece is only one inch long. But again, I wanted to show you all this so that you can make it, you know, any pop-up anywhere you want. So now that's all I've got, it's just this little piece here. So again, I can stick one half and that's going to stick on the back of the lamp. Okay, make sure everything's nice and straight. If you fold it down kind of flat there, you can make sure you line it up like so. Okay, so that's ready to go onto the back. But again, I want to make a tiny piece just for the bottom there, just to land that lamp on the card. So that's all I'm going to have, it's just this tiny little piece here. The smaller you can get, the better, because then you don't really see it. You know, you want to try and hide as many of the pop-up pieces as possible. But now, again, just doing the same with the chair legs, just sticking it behind. And then just fold it back over on itself so the fold runs flush with the bottom of the object. Okay, just like so. And you're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to pop a little bit of glue on the bottom of here and a little bit of glue just on there. And now this one is going to attach to the curtain. So I'm going to position where I want it to be, stick the tab one down first at the top, but kind of as you do it, fold the whole thing flat. And again, once you open it up, can you see there how now that lamp pops out as well? Now they're the only two pop up pieces that I've done. I'm just going to put my glue there so you can see the front of this. So now 
what I done is I started building up on the chair itself. That's actually a little bit too light. There's hardly any glue left in it. I need to fill it up. There we go. So you would now be able to stick your dog down. I'm going to actually stick down my pillow. Again, this is all in that die set. So let's do just there. And then that's got room to have something to stick in front of it if I need to. Now with this one here, I just want to stick it just kind of there, okay? Because on this side, I just attached the... In fact, I can put a little bit of glue on there. Just a little wine bottle here. Just with a little bit of glue, it just attached itself just by that bottle, really. There we go. Then with the plum, because it's going to be flush with the, with the bottom here, what I want to do is make another little tab just for the bottom. So I'm just going to cut this piece here. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just on that bottom piece. And then again, just stick it onto the bottom of the plant. And then fold that piece again back on itself. So whatever the size, just make sure that your piece hides behind it. I need to just straighten that a little bit there. And they're only small images, so you don't need massive tabs. I could probably go a little bit shorter actually with that tab. Like I said, the smaller you can go, the better. But now I'm gonna add some glue to that leaf just to stick it to the actual sofa. But the bottom piece is then gonna stick, that tab is gonna to stick to the bottom of the floor there, or the bottom of the card. Okay, so you can see now how that flower pot is just attached to the bottom. But all that's popping out. Now you could have that on its own piece and stick it to the back of the wall here. You could have something else coming further here, but always remember flatten it, you know, lie it down first and make sure it doesn't pop out the end here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add the carpet there, just a little end of it. I didn't do the whole one. But I'm just gonna Again, I just kind of paper pieced it. I embossed this cream piece and then used the tassels in a different colour there. That can just lay down like so. And again, I just like to flip it over and trim it from this side here and that way you get a nice flush finish. Now you've got all the space here on the back, just do some mats and layers to write your message. And then now I'm gonna stick that home And there you have it. That's ready for the front once I do my mats and layers along with the other plant there as well. But if I just bring this up a bit closer, you can see how lovely that looks. And then I always like to do some glossy accents. You'll see on this home here, see how it shines? This is all I've used here, the glossy accents. And I'm just gonna go over. Okay, so it goes on cloudy but it dries clear, but it adds a lovely shine to anything that you add it to. I use it in pretty much every card, but that's as far as I'm going to go with this one. You can always add some animals to it and things like that as well, but I'm going to let that dry and then I'm just going to do the same matte and layer that I've done here for the front and add that new home dye and then I'll do a matte and layer for the back where I can write my message. So I'll just bring over this one again because this is dry and you can see the dog and just how lovely and I also added some glossy accents to the fire there as well the flames and I added it to the water in the vase as well but I think it's turned out really really well so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and showing you how you can use any dyes you want to make your own pop-up cards check out my other pop-up tutorials that I'll have here as well and I'll be back again very soon with another video thanks for watching bye